Hello and welcome to another episode of Sandy Killer Projects. Today we're in a car that we do not own. Uh, this is a car that we're just getting to check out temporarily. Um, we're going to do a full detailed walkthrough on it. Now I'm just uh, driving it back over to the ranch and figured I'd uh, show off what it looks like a little bit on the inside before we get going. All right, so here it is back in the ranch up close and personal with the car. Uh, this is a black one. Um, it is the Big Bend Edition. It's a 1.5 liter. Uh, makes 181 horsepower with 190 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, this model, as I had mentioned, is a kind of a basic one. Uh, there's lots to these, but this one in particular doesn't have a lot of the bells and whistles. Um, that's probably why it was a uh, 22 sold in 23 um, just couldn't move it off a lot because it doesn't have a lot to it but we'll still show off what it's got so in the interior it's got um, some pretty basic controls in the door you have your manual latch right here and your uh, electronic opening latch uh, window controls for the uh, mirrors and then your uh, window controls for your driver passenger and rear and then your speaker it's like I said it's, a, it's a basic addition it's a pretty basic car let's take a look at the seats uh, this is one of the first things that I noticed getting into the car um, the color of them actually isn't all that bad and it actually mixes nicely with the uh, the black and the and the gray but the problem is um, if you notice they're very very flat um, there is not much padding to them they are not very comfortable um, and when you feel them they feel very cheap because they are just heavy heavy nylon a little bit of cotton in the side um, this wrap around bit doesn't really do very much for you even on the driver's side um, it's this setup, this car, uh, not not super comfortable. I have driven the uh, Badlands Edition. They are much more comfortable seats, much more styled, uh, better styling uh, altogether. But in this one, um, I definitely have to say these are very hard and not comfortable. They're not going to be good on long road trips. This one on the left side, uh, you have um, your interior lighting and your exterior lighting controls. Um, then you have your turn signal marker, the steering wheel itself, which is sideways has some controls on it, I'll straighten that out and show it to you. Um, then you have your wiper controls on the right side. Um, your start button, which I feel should be over here, is over here in the center console underneath the cup. Okay, one of my big complaints that I've always had on all of these uh, Bronco Sports is the screen. The screen for me is set up too high. There's no reason for this cup. You have a cup down here if you're going to store your cell phone. This is actually where they put the cell phone charger if you have the technology package. Um, this whole assembly should have been moved down and integrated into the dash. Because of that, it um, runs into the view. Um, I had some people complain about me saying that um, there's an issue with it being high up. Well, actually, when it comes down to it, the hood actually sticks out more than anything. Um, the hood is very intrusive on this car. It actually feels like it reaches up and over. On this particular model, especially because of the fact the seats are manually adjust, they do go up a little bit to make you feel higher. The, the, the roof is very, very roomy. You could probably push the seat up a little bit so you feel like you have a little bit more control over the road and over the car while you're driving it. Um, the controls in the center are super, super simple. I'll fire up the car and show you. So this car actually has a, a kind of cool feature that I was trying to show off, but apparently when you stop and start the car, it doesn't make the video replay itself over. But um, at the very beginning when you first start it, it looks like rolling rocks and they turn into the Bronco with like some hills in the background. It's kind of a cool setup. Um, one of the things that I can show you though is when you shut the car off and power it down, um, it does like a shutdown video that shows the Bronco 2, which is kind of cool. So I'll do that and show you. Um, have to make sure to open the door so that it powers everything down um, and then it does kind of a, a goodbye video with the Bronco in it fading out. As I mentioned it's kind of a basic uh, vehicle so the screen is not as uh, fancy and cool as on the uh, Badlands edition but um, the controls are all fairly similar. Um, your stereo controls function just like any other stereo control would function um, when you turn the stereo off uh, you have to go into all the different little apps to get back to the main screens. Um, this one in particular is showing the phone, um, but um, there are other settings for your driver assist, which it does have lane departure assistance, and a few other um, controls built into it um, for blind spot and camera and uh, collision assistance, cross traffic alerts, um, all of which can be switched on and off for whatever features that you, uh, you normally use. Um, then it also has some vehicle information um, uh, showing you uh, different things for use inside the car, like uh, info about your um, remote start, uh, lighting controls, door locks, how they work with your, with your push buttons, um, then how much idle time it'll allow it before the car automatically shuts off in case you forget to turn your car off as you leave it. Uh, Bluetooth connection, phone connection, Wi-Fi, 
uh, Android uh, Auto, Apple CarPlay, um, all your different mobile apps, uh, 911 assistance, all pretty standard on most cars. This one's an interesting one. It has a valet mode that you have to set uh, a pin uh, to put it in and take it out of. It only allows limited controls within the car when somebody's using the car uh, to park it for you. Um, that's pretty much it. This is, a, this is a pretty basic standard setup. It does have a little compass in the corner. Um, when the audio is off, it's not going to tell you anything, and your phone would show up here if it's connected. Um, so your stereo controls all work through here. Um, you turn them on and up, uh, off and on with the controls, forward and skip. Uh, your hazard button is also in here. This uh, disables your automatic stop start. Um, which for me, that's one of those controls that I absolutely can't stand. Uh, going down to your AC controls, um, if you turn the fan switch, it will automatically go on. Um, but uh, you can also turn it on and off with the power button. And then you decide uh, what temperature you want and speed uh, based on uh, how you turn the knob. You can turn the temperature up or down depending on what you want. And then uh, fan speed high and low on the, on the left control. This one shows the, the temperature. Um, then you can turn on your defrosters, uh, where you want the air to blow, uh, AC, uh, auto, fan, and max, and then recycling your air. Uh, down in the bottom, if you had the technology package, there would be a, a, a charger down in here. On this one, it's just got plugs. You got your USB, your USB-C, and a 12 volt um, in the uh, center. Uh, okay, so, uh, most cars nowadays either have a stick or some of the older cars have the lever stick up here. On this one, it has a roll knob. So if you want to change positions for what gear you're going to be in, um, you spin the knob one direction or the other. If you spin it into reverse, the reverse camera will come on with some telemetry data for backing up. Then you also have your neutral switch, um, your drive switch, um, and then you can press the center button to put it into low to keep the car in basically first gear or lower gear. Um, then uh, you have your parking brake. This is one of the ones that actually bothers me. Uh, this one in particular, uh, on my car, um, when you push it or pull it, there is a light. On this one, there's nothing. I've currently set the parking brake. There's nothing to tell me it's on. All right, so there's another button below the parking brake. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, if any of you guys know, throw it in the comments. I'll uh, be more than happy to transfer the information to other people as they ask. Underneath this is what's called the greatest of all terrain modes, or the GOAT modes. Um, this, when you spin this dial, it changes different positions on your center console. So I'm going to spin the dial, um, and then it changes your driving mode. This is your normal driving mode, Eco, which gives you better, better gas mileage. Um, your sport mode, uh, which gives you more throttle. Your uh, slippery mode for driving in wet conditions. And then your sand mode, which uh, is supposed to help you when you're driving in sand. As you can see, the traction control has been turned off. It actually, the sand mode is a funny one because it, it locks you into a lower gear and doesn't allow it to shift. Um, I found that out driving around the property a little bit to see what it would do. Um, it is rainy today, but not enough to be slippery, so there's no real way I'd be able to test that out. Um, I'm assuming that it's more prone to engage the traction control. Um, in your sport mode, sport mode is interesting because this is supposed to be the one that gives you the most throttle. After having driven this car around a little bit, uh, the one thing that I found is this car, because it's the 1.5 and not the 2.0, uh, it's doggy. This is a doggy car. Um, it doesn't uh, pick up speed quickly. Uh, so in normal mode, you'd step on the throttle, there's a little bit of a delay, and it goes. In eco mode, you step on the throttle, there's a lot of delay, not much throttle response, and then it goes. So that would be your eco mode where there's not a lot of throttle response. The one where there's supposed to be a lot of throttle, sp throttle response would be your sport mode. In sport mode, it uh, should, as soon as you stop on the throttle, take off, go, go like hell. In this case, it really doesn't. Um, it kind of stutters a little bit and then takes off. There's no real snappy response. You don't feel like you're thrown back into the seat at all. It's not a high horsepower car. This is very much a commuter car. There's not a lot to it. Um, it's, it's a lovely car if somebody were uh, looking for a good commuter, but really when it comes down to it, this is, uh, this is not made to be like a, a performancey car. If you want that, you're, you're going to have to step up to the Badlands Edition. Badlands Edition is much more snappy. It's a 250 horsepower car when you put it into sport. Throttle response is much more active. Going through the rest of the car, there's a um, glove box on this side. It's massive. It's very, very deep. 
Um, it's actually almost too deep to access stuff all the way down in it. Um, if you've just got like your registration stuff and you have to get it out quickly, it's it's way down in there. It's big and it's deep. I like that. Um, I wish it were a little bit more back ways. Um, there's a couple of cup holders in the center console. Um, there's also a cup holder in the door on the passenger side and on the driver's side. Up in the top, there are some lighting controls. Uh, there's also a sunglass holder. Um, then your visor has a vanity mirror with lights on it on uh, both sides, which is convenient. Uh, a lot of cars don't have it where it has vanity lights on both sides. End of the back seat, this is a, a big bench seat. Uh, no real amenities in the back other than the fact that you have a couple of uh, plug-in ports down here on the floor, uh, USB and USB-C. There's also another set of them in the center console. Um, and then you have some uh, controls for your uh, AC and, and heater. Um, there's no spare pockets in the back. There is a rear cup holder um, in the door cup uh, along with your door pull and your window controls and manual controls for your uh, window. Uh, beyond that, um, there is a center console center console has a couple of cup holders in it um, and to access your the back of your car from here um, there are, is a button on the top right here you hit this button and it releases the seats forward moving to the back uh, this is where your gas filler is on the driver's side um, this is one of the capless style um, there's no lock on the door or on the the, the cap filler uh, so um, there's no button inside the cab that actually makes it to where it opens that you just uh, push up on it and uh, put the nozzle in in the back down towards the bottom uh, there's your rear camera and then there's your glass controller and your door controller so to open the door you need to open the glass and then open the door uh, we'll show you how that works so when the glass button is hit it releases that and you grab this little handle here and open it up now this to me has always been one of the funny things of this design um, if I have a grocery bag that grocery bag is not small enough to fit through this opening. This opening is literally just like, oh, I gotta, I gotta grab something out of the back here. Not any real use for this um, addition, other than the fact to make it look a little bit more like a Bronco. Um, so the other thing that's funny about this is the door hatch lifts up. So because the door hatch lifts up, I can't lift this like that. Um, it will allow you to do it, but the problem is, as you go up, you're gonna hit your antenna. Um, if it has the roof racks, I think it hits the roof racks too. So you actually can't um, do that. You have to close the glass first and make sure it's latched and then open the door because that is the only way this thing easily opens up. Um, one complaint that a lot of people have had about this particular car is the door, even though it opens up, and it opens up about uh, maybe six foot four inches tall, it's really low. Especially the closer you get into the inside, it feels very small. Um, the opening is huge, but the space is very, very small. So inside of the back, um, you have a couple of little uh, straps to hold onto things. You have a 12 volt on the, on the right side. On the left side, you have a light button um, where the lights turn on on the other side, even though you hit the button on this side, which would make more sense if the light was here or if it was on both sides. Um, there's a little storage space in here. Um, these are just some blankets for the people that are um, using the car. And then to get down underneath, you lift up this little handle here, and underneath of that is your spare tire and uh, uh, emergency gas filler. I did want to show those. This thing has a massive amount of cargo space once the um, seats are down. One thing I don't like about um, this vehicle is there's no simple way for me to get those back up from here. You have to go to each of the doors and lift it up. Uh, on the Honda that we purchased recently, if you've seen the video on that, there's a nice little pull handle. You only have to reach to about here and pull it up. Uh, one of the features I do like about this car is the back, um, right in this space, has a hard bottom. Uh, if you get the Badlands Edition, the back of the seats have it on it as well. Uh, it makes it much more um, rigid, um, much more industrial, much more like, hey, I could throw some lumber in here and it's not really a big deal. In this case, because the back of the seats have the cloth on the back of it, um, I, it makes it feel like the two spaces are broken up. They probably should have kept that plastic plate going all the way back to the back of the seats. It would have made it feel much more rigid. One thing I hadn't noticed about the uh, the lighting switch in the interior here is it also turns on a couple uh, lights up here on the door, one on either side, and the lights uh, rotate forward and back to allow you to move the light to whatever area you need, either uh, more out onto the floor or into the 
uh, back of the trunk space. So back inside the cab, this is actually the um, hood latch. Um, why it says twice, I'm not really sure. I've never seen one that's like this. You pull it once and you hear it open. You pull it again and you hear it kind of click again. I guess that releases the second lock. Normally there's a lever in the inside. When I go over to the hood there, there's going to be nothing holding it into, into place. The first one, I guess, holds it once and then you pull it again to release the second one. It's kind of an odd setup, well, uh, but let's go take a look. So there it is. That is the 1.5 liter three cylinder. This is a three cylinder. As you can see, there's uh, spots there for three different spark plugs. Um, on the Badlands Edition, there's going to be a cover over this to make this look a little cleaner. Um, I'm actually kind of surprised there isn't one on this Badlands. Um, most of the stuff in here uh, makes a lot of sense. Everything is uh, very small engine wise, so everything can be tucked in here with lots and lots of space. Um, this is your air cleaner, battery, uh, windshield washer fluid, brake fluid, radiators up front. Uh, there's probably six inches between the front of the the radiator and the front of the car. Um, it's This is a, a, a pretty standard setup. Um, the one thing also, um, this one has a door, uh, a hood prop. I think the Badlands has uh, struts on either side so that you don't uh, have to deal with the prop. Um, but otherwise, uh, this is what a small three-cylinder engine looks like. So looking at the exterior stylings, um, one of the things about this car that I love is it feels big, industrial, bulky. Um, this one is the smaller version compared to the Bronco, um, but this one still feels very uh, masculine, let's say. Um, the hood with the two big ridges on the top uh, feels very strong. Um, and when you're driving it and seeing the, the top of the hood, it feels like a very industrial car. Um, I love the little lighting circles. I think those are really, really cool on it. Um, I like the uh, step up in the side uh, of the roof. This actually makes it feel like a, like an Xterra or an FJ or something like that. Um, me personally, I am a uh, big square boxy car kind of guy, which is why we have the XJ. Um, but in this case, um, I like the quick drop off. I wish it had a, a little bit more uh, manly features on this uh, kind of uh, base model. Um, some big fender flares, heavy heavy bumper, heavy winch, that kind of stuff. Even on the on the the higher end models of this, they don't offer those kind of options. Um, and since these are still fairly new, there's not a lot of aftermarket parts out yet. Supposedly, there's a lot of companies that are going to be making aftermarket parts for the Bronco and the Bronco Sport. But as of this point, there hasn't been too much out there yet. So um, this is the Bronco Sport. This is what it looks like. There are some better uh, additions and features that you can get um, added to them. Um, but if this is something that you're looking for, um, we're glad that you took the time to check out uh, this one with us. Uh, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Uh, we keep making videos as often as we can get stuff together for content. So please make sure to subscribe, uh, like, share, tell your friends. Uh, we'll keep making more videos. Thanks for watching.